So you're brand new to drones and you're trying to avoid some of the costly mistakes you've seen some of your fellow drone pilots make. What you'll begin to notice is that flying safely does not just apply when your drone is in the air. Here's a look at the 15 biggest mistakes that beginner drone pilots make and some of the best practices that you can implement during takeoff. Your first few flights are super important to your success. The things that you implement early on will help as you grow. The first mistake on our list is disregarding airspace, which plays a big role in determining where you can and can't fly. The airspace above you is split up into sections that can be identified as controlled and uncontrolled airspace. Uncontrolled airspace is where you'll be spending the majority of your time flying. However, once you get closer to things like airports or stadiums, your reach starts to narrow a little bit and you enter controlled airspace. The next mistake on our list is not checking the DJI GeoZone website before flying in a new location. This website allows you to put the exact location of your flight to check if it's safe to fly. This list has a bunch of great recommendations for apps that beginner drone pilots can use. Check things like weather and airspace when you're heading to a new spot that you haven't flown before, and it ensures that you're not breaking the law in that area. If you type in DJI GeoZone on Google, it will direct you to a website where you can enter the address or the location of where you wanna fly, and it'll bring up the airspace or the advisories in that area that you'll need to be aware of. Scroll down below the map and you'll find a description of what each of those zones mean. Mistake number three, part 107, rules and regulations. Now, if you got discouraged by all those different zones, don't worry. Like I said, the majority of airspace is uncontrolled, meaning ready to fly when you are but I did want to mention it because there are a lot of people out there interested in turning their passion for drones into a profit. And the first step is understanding the drone laws in your area. From there, you can get your part 107 license, which is required to make money flying drones or receiving any type of monetary compensation for your drone work. To learn more about this, check out this video, which is a step-by-step -step guide to getting certified. Mistake number four, not having proper documentation. So let's say you do get certified and you land your first paid gig. What documentation will you need when you show up? Two main things, your remote pilot certificate and your drone's registration, which needs to be easily visible on the outside of your drone. Keep in mind, this is for commercial use only, meaning you're getting paid for your drone work. If you're just flying for fun, all you need to do is complete the trust process online, which I'll link below and you'll need to register your drone. Mistake number five is flying without insurance. I'm gonna make a separate video on drone insurance because I always get asked this question, but to break it down simply, there's on-demand drone insurance and annual policies. What that means is if you're flying drones for a client, and you don't do it that frequently, you'll wanna book that on-demand drone insurance, which will cover you for the hour or so that you're actually flying your drone. As you start to land higher paying clients, you can purchase an annual policy, which is a bit more expensive, but it covers all your missions throughout the year. As a beginner, liability insurance will protect you from being personally liable for any damage that occurs from a crash on site. Mistake number six, taking off near people. There's always gonna be that family walking by or the guy that walks up to you and asks questions right as you're about to take off. They always wanna know how high the drone goes, how far it goes, what's the max speed, and how much does it cost? Believe me, it will happen. Kindly let them know you need full focus while flying and you need to ensure there are no people near the drone as you take off. It gets super easy to get wrapped up in talking to people right as you're about to fly, and then you're gonna make some kind of mistake that was easily avoidable. Mistake number seven, rushing into it. Speaking of mistakes, they always tend to happen when you rush into it. 
Take your time, make sure everything's ready to go before you take off. These next few mistakes will help you dial in your equipment. I've had drones for years without a single problem and the only thing that I do differently from some of my fellow operators is I make sure I don't make beginner mistakes as an advanced drone operator. Most of the things on this list I implemented right away, right when I started flying, and I stick to them even to this day. Mistake number eight is powering up equipment incorrectly. I always recommend you power up your remote first and then the drone. You never wanna have just the drone on with nothing controlling it. That goes for powering down too. The last thing you want is a drone that's powered up without anything to tell it what to do. Once that's ready to go, launch the DJI Go app on your mobile device and ensure the cord is connected to your phone. Sometimes you'll sit there with the drone on, the controller on, and no video signal, which is about the same time you realize that your remote isn't connected to your phone. Mistake number nine, low battery flights. I see beginners all the time putting in half charged batteries into your drone expecting a full flight. If you wanna build your confidence, start by making sure everything is done properly. Using low batteries or forgetting to charge your batteries before you go out flying is an easy way to get inaccurate power readings which can cause an early landing, if you know what I mean. Mistake number 10, not calibrating your compass. The compass in your drone acts as a standard for understanding the location and position of your drone during flight. If you have an inaccurate sensor measurement, you're more likely to experience errors during flight. You could make sure this doesn't happen by clicking the green ready to go banner and scrolling down to compass calibration. If you're by yourself, you can set your remote down to where you can see the screen and rotate the drone so you don't have to hold both at the same time. Mistake number 11, forgetting to update your home location. After you've got the calibration dialed in, your drone will automatically set the home point location so that it knows where it took off from. If you just power on your drone and launch it without calibrating or giving it a second to record that home location, then it might still think the last place you flew is the home point, which could give you problems if the drone disconnects during flight or if you click that return to home button on your remote. Mistake number 12, not setting up the return to home. You can always set the return to home altitude or the height that it will return to by going to the main controller settings and clicking return to home. This is super important because you'll wanna constantly update it based on where you're flying. Set the return to home altitude to something that's above the tallest object in your flight path. A clear beginner mistake is relying on the default settings in an environment that may have high buildings or high trees and expecting your drone to navigate around those between you and its current location, which could be hundreds or thousands of feet away. Second, you'll wanna reset the home point if you're physically walking or moving from that initial location while flying. I've seen accidents happen on boats when the drone comes back to land in its original position, which is now just water. Mistake number 13, not taking GPS strength seriously. Some people think these drones are indestructible and can operate in any condition no matter what. Before you take off, let your drone connect to the satellites in your area, which will increase the signal strength and keep your drone from drifting around. Let me break it down for you. There are two reasons why having GPS is important. First, return to home. Second, position hold. When you first take off your drone and the drone's hovering at eye level right in front of you, position hold will keep it in that location even if you take your fingers off the remote. It'll compensate for wind and limit the amount that it drifts around in that area. If you think about the value this provides, it allows you as an operator to slow down time in a complex situation. By taking a step back, you can be confident the drone will stay in that location, and then you can determine the best course of action to get your drone back safely. Mistake number 14, taking off near metal objects. This adds right on to the last mistake in our list, which has to do with signal strength. Believe it or not, you will experience accidents during flight 
if you take off next to a large metal object or a metal structure. As you power on your drone, it connects to around 14 different satellites, depending on how many it can actually get a hold of. As an easy way to get poor signal strength and compass interference, you can take off next to a big metal object. If this happens, move around to a different spot and launch your drone from a different area. Open areas will give you the ability to connect right away and you'll be good to go. And lastly, mistake number 15, forgetting to hover. This last one on our list is something I personally do before every flight. I typically take off and I let my drone hover right in front of me for a few seconds while I get a good look at it. Over time, you'll get more and more familiar with how your drone is supposed to operate. And I can usually tell right away if anything is out of the ordinary. It's better to catch these things when it's a few feet off the ground as opposed to a few hundred feet in the air. That's it for the top 15 biggest mistakes that beginner drone pilots make, and we'll see you in the next video.